Hall of Fame coaches, national champions, lottery picks, the best minds in basketball. Welcome into the sidelines with Evan Daniels. What's up, college basketball fans? Welcome back to the Sidelines Podcast. I'm your host, Evan Daniels, college basketball insider at FS1, as well as the director of basketball recruiting at 24-7 Sports. Today's episode is the 97th episode, and today's featured guest is none other than Hall of Fame broadcaster and the infamous Bill Raftery. He jumped on the show and we broke down the Big East tournament, what's going on in college basketball. We talked Final Four picks. We talked Zion Williamson, John Morant, North Carolina's recent success, and much, much more. Before I get to that conversation with Bill Raftery, I want to make sure that you are subscribed and supporting the Sidelines podcast. The best way to do that is to shoot over to Apple Podcasts and or your favorite podcast app. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for me. I'd also ask that you leave a rating and a review. If you could do that, it would be extremely helpful. So give us a star rating. Give us some feedback. That would be extremely helpful. Now let's jump to that interview with Bill Raftery. It's time to go minimum with Evan Daniels. Send it in, big fella. Now let's welcome back to the podcast a colleague over at FS1 and a Hall of Fame broadcaster, Bill Raftery. Raft, how are you, man? I'm doing great, Ev. Trying to keep up with you is hard, but I'm giving it a shot, you know? <laughs> I think you're doing a pretty decent job of that. I know you're, uh, you'll are you you'll be at the Big East Tournament coming up. I know you're calling games, I think, Wednesday and Thursday. It's been kind of a wild year in the league. What's kind of your been your biggest takeaway from watching so much Big East ball this year and, and kind of heading into the tournament? There's no chalk, basically, it seems like, particularly with you know, Marquette struggling coming down the stretch and Villanova having the bumps in the road, too. Uh, it, it, I think it just tells you how the field is pretty even, uh, which should make for a wild couple of days. You know, No one's out of the mix in terms of uh, potential of beating you. You know, over the years, we always might say, hey, the Paul's struggling, you know, jump on them and, you know, you'll be okay. But they, they've proven that, you know, a tough out, even in losses. So there's a lot of respect amongst, for all programs, you know, Xavier's on a run now. Was it six or eight games in a row, if I'm not mistaken? You know, the other one, uh, you know, everybody keeps saying, I don't want to play St. John's in the garden. And they've been struggling coming down the stretch. So I just think it's a, a you know, a bunch of teams that are extremely competitive, young. Uh, you don't know who's going to show up. Uh, you know, you can go down the line with like a Creighton and say, if you can't get 80 to 90 points, you can't play with Creighton. Right. So, I mean, it's just a, just a, an interesting, uh, each club does something, you know, that's part of their personality, you know, Butler push it and then run the whole clock and make you be patient. Uh, Providence has been up and down because they're young, but, uh, you know, Georgetown has a great win the other night. Uh, so there's a, I think Georgetown and Seton Hall have sort of played themselves uh, I think Seton Hall is out of the conversation. I'm guessing they're in, and I think Georgetown is back in the conversation. So, yeah, uh, intriguing. I, I think a lot happen. It depends on what happens this Wednesday and Thursday for a couple of teams. Can they get to Friday? You know. Yeah, I think I think those days are going to be extremely important. How about the job Patrick Ewing's done at Georgetown? I mean, he's. It, it didn't take him long to make them relevant. Well, you know, it sort of harken back to talking to Jeff Van Gundy. When he got when Patrick got the job and he was going down to spend some time, and uh, he was saying, you know, he got the biggest kick out of people. Went, well, you know, can he coach? And of course, he had coached with him. And Patrick, I think, got 13 or 14 years in the NBA, so he knows every quick hitter. Uh, you know, he knows it, all the individual breakdown drills, and uh, that was not a big concern of Jeff's. And uh, I think the other areas that you know, if anybody had a concern was, you know, getting out and watching kids and, and recruiting them and talking them into coming to Georgetown. And I think with his freshman class of this year, he has proven that to be the case. And I'm told he's got uh, a couple of big kids coming in, one city now from state. Uh, so I, I just am, I've been very impressed with him. And I, I think his demeanor on the sideline is, is, is intriguing, too. You know, he's a gentle giant on the sideline, but very forceful in what he wants his players to do. And they've responded. You know, I know they've gotten uh, nicked here and there, but I think that's, you know, you start freshman backcourt, uh, you're not so sure every game. And, you know, that, that they, they've overcome a lot of those shortcomings with young people. And, of course, Govan, when he plays big and dominates a little bit and rebounds, you know, he can score. Right. Uh, they're, 
formidable club. I, I think you hit it, uh, the nail on the head with like the recruiting aspect. You know, obviously that's something that I know pretty well. But I think he's like he's taken some under the radar guys. Like James Akinjo kind of blew up late in his high school career. Mac McClung, I th- I truthfully thought was just an athlete, and he's developed those guys, and they've continued to got, get better. And I, I think that's that's been pretty impressive to to watch what he's been able to to do. Who, Raph, would you say, and I, this is probably a difficult question, but who would you pick to win the tournament as of today? Wow. The Big East uh, tournament. You, you know, if you asked me this a week ago, uh, I would have said maybe Marquette. Uh, but I, 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 they weren't un, they were unable to seize the moment. And I think these couple of days off are key for them. Uh, you know, Villanova is an amazing team. They can raise their level of play and, if they start making threes, they, they are a tough out. Uh, to, you put me in an area that uh, I'm not very good at, but I, I would say Villanova. You know, I know Seton Hall has had two great wins and come into this tournament ready to go. Uh, but I, I would say the top two would be, you know, Villanova and probably Marquette if they get their act in gear. Right. And then the way, the way Seton Hall's playing, I think that they'll probably be in the mix too. Yeah, I think Seton Hall and maybe even Xavier. They're, I mean, Xavier, you can make a case, is the hardest, hottest team in the league. Yeah, they are, and, and I think they're, they're, yeah, they're big people are stepping up. Uh, I guess I think it was Marshall got hurt a little bit with his ankle. Uh, they, they, they are playing terrific, watching them coming down the stretch as well. But Georgetown's another one. I mean, you know, they've got size, and they've got, you know, they're, they're spirited. They're not afraid of the moment. Uh, so I just think we're in for a heck of a week. Yeah, me me too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Marcus Howard has had a tremendous regular season. I mean, he's got to be player of the, the, the year in the conference, right? I would agree. I mean, I know he struggled, particularly the Seton Hall game. Uh, you know, even up at Providence, he had 14 points, but I liked the game he had. Uh, you know, they won. He played within himself, didn't try and get to 30. Uh, and I look for him to be – he's a gamer, that kid, so – I look for him to start playing really solid basketball again. But, yeah, you know, Pascal's another guy that comes to mind as well. Uh, what he's been able to do, shorthanded, playing, what, 30-some-odd minutes, 35, 36 minutes a game. So uh, I, I would go one-two with that. Got it. Got it. Let's talk overall hoops. And, and uh, I've seen Zion Williamson has kind of been the, the national rage this year, when was the last time we've had a player as exciting as as this kid has been? I guess it would be LeBron who didn't go to college. You know, that would <laughs> come to mind. Yeah, it's it, it's it's sort of sad in a way, but I'm happy they're they're being very careful with him. It looks like he's going to play later in the week. They've had some good workouts, according to Mike. But I've never seen a guy. Well, he's positionless, uh, which makes him a tough matchup. You know, who do you put on him? You know, right? Uh, maybe your best. And there's six five. Well, he can load up on him, and conversely, you put a bigger guy on him, he could just, you know, handle the ball so well and attack the rim. Uh, but I, I've never seen a guy as physically imposing, uh, able to have everything in the arsenal. You know, just the the three, the mid range, the post up. Uh, he's unselfish. Got a great attitude. It looks like great personality. You know, looks like he'd be a wonderful teammate as well. So. In recent memory, you know, even if you go back to Jordan, everybody knew he was good, but never knew he would blossom like he did. As he, as Dean Smith used to say, he was the only guy that could keep him under 20 points a game. Uh, <laughs> but he learned how to fight under Dean, obviously. But uh, now this kid is uh, – and then, you know, what's funny. You, you look at him and you forget how good these other guys are. And you, you know these kids better than I do because you've watched them from probably 7th and 8th grade. Uh, they're just outstanding as a group. And, you know, he's the bellwether. He's the guy that uh, can bring them home if he gets healthy. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Do you think when he's healthy they're the best team, or is there somebody else you would be pointing to right now? I think he's the best talent. Got it. You know, I, I do. I, I think they have the best talent, I should say. I think Gonzaga, because of the league, people have forgotten them again. And, you know, watching them the last couple of weeks, you know, they're, they, they are, you know, we know they beat Duke Gurley uh, in Maui, but uh, they they are very good. I, I like Virginia a lot. 
I, I, we had them a couple of weeks ago, so getting ready to watch a lot of other games. And they now, they, they can score. I mean, we always talk about defense, control the clock, you know, don't make any mistakes, get to the free throw line. But they, they have people who are really good offensive players, and they're doing some other things besides the, you know, rubs on the posts and moving the posts up and down and out and guys curling off them. So they have individual players now in Hunter and, of course, the back cut, Jerome uh, guy. I mean, this, this, this is a really good basketball team. So I like those two. And the other one who's playing great is Carolina. Yeah. You know, people, you know, sort of the improvement that Roy has been able to make and cultivate with this group is, is sensational. So, you know, this, those are three or four of the top teams, no question about it. Not a bad Final Four if they all get in it. No, that'd be a great one. Well, that, that was what I was going to ask you next. Would that be your Final Four teams as of now? I mean, obviously, we don't know the matchups or anything like that. but right. or Where they're all going. But, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's a pretty good group. You know, Michigan State, without their top scorers, has done a great job, too. You know, with Ward and Langford out, 35 points, and be able to get a share, I think, of the Big Ten title is just – it's remarkable, right? Amazing. And, and Winston, like, second half last night was just, you know, he did the same thing at Mission a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we happened to be there. So they've got great leadership and, you know, a couple of seniors and Goins, McQuaid, that, you know, they've answered the bell uh, under, under duress, too. And, I, you know, being with Tom last week, this is probably the most gratifying championship or co-championship I think he's ever had. Uh, simply because they've overcome so many injuries. And, you know, games missed due to injury, too, is another add-on. Yeah, no question. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable what they've been able to accomplish with those those injuries. You, you mentioned uh, Virginia. It's almost like, a, you know, a, a boa constrictor around your neck, just squeezing you and squeezing you and squeezing you until you break. And it's almost – I was watching their game against Louisville earlier this week, and it's like Louisville had the um, – they had the lead for most of the game, and then the last six minutes, they just kind of slowly over overcome you. And you're right; I think that team has much more offense than maybe we've seen in the past to go with that big time defense. I, I think this is probably obviously they had a one seed last year, but I think this is arguably the best team he's had. Yeah, you know, I, I do think uh, you know because even at center with you know Saul, the kid Huff is going to be a really good player. Uh, you know, the, he doesn't get a whole lot of minutes, obviously, in Dikite. So they've got like three guys in the center spot. Uh, Key is another guy, you know, good, really good player at Alabama. I'm sure you saw him in high mm-hmm. school. And, you know, he gives them a little post-up game. They, they, they are a little deeper. And, and, again, the offense is so much better uh, that, you know, it's overlooked because, you know, they squeeze that clock, as you noted. And, uh, they're mistake free. I mean, they really do a great job valuing the ball. I don't know what it is now. It was eight eight a game earlier in the year. It's probably up at least to nine. Right. So they they don't beat themselves. No question. It, you were mentioning North Carolina kind of coming on, and it just seems like they've just consistently gotten better throughout this season. You know, I, I wasn't a huge fan of their team early on in the year. And now, I mean, they're just playing. I think Kobe White's taken off, and as a team, they are they are looking pretty good. Is it fair to say that Roy Williams is maybe a little undervalued as a coach? All, all that he's accomplished. Well, uh, you know, this this is one of those years. You know, I think this is if you don't get him this year, uh, I think they're starting to get back into that recruiting mix. And you yep. again, I bow to you, uh, <laughs> able to get you know those top notch kids that they've uh, you know that cloud over their head the last few years of uh, negativity whether something drastic was going to happen to the program or not but he, you know he, he's developed the big guys have gotten better mm-hmm. you know brooks has gotten better and then kenny williams making shots like he did last night you know those are big time additions and you're absolutely right about kobe white he is fearless you know he's got a string on the ball uh he makes big plays he's confident he's fearless uh, you know, Little has come along, uh, you know, coming down the stretch. He didn't play as much, I don't think, last night, if my memory's correct. But, you know, he's started to contribute. And, of course, Cameron Johnson, you know, the kid out of Pitt, uh, you know, he just really knows how to play. Good footwork, confident with his three, uh, you know, just a good all-around player. So, yeah, I think they've developed as as a group in the pre season player of the year is Luke May, who people don't talk about much anymore. <laughs> You're right. So, uh, you know, they've got a pretty darn group. 
I, I thought Kobe White made himself some money in that Carolina Duke game. I think he's, especially in a week, kind of what's going to be a weak point guard draft class, I think he's kind of moving up that list. And, and, and speaking of point guards, I'm curious, Raph, how much have you had a chance to watch John Morant? Just, just like everybody else, you know, snippets. A little more last night. I was here in, in Ohio watching them last night. And, uh, you know, the dunk, I mean, the kid, you know, he can make plays. I know he turns it over, but, boy, you get 10 assists a game. Uh, pretty impressive. And, uh, you know, a little bit like Trey in Atlanta with the Hawks now. Mm-hmm. People weren't sure how, how good he would be. You know, I, I think this kid's one of those – you know, one of those kids that's going to catch somebody's eye. He's going to be fun to go watch play. And I don't mean he's like Jason Kidd. But when I saw Jason in college, it was the same kind of thing. It was like, what, what's he going to thrill me with tonight? And I think that kid possesses that little extra splash of stardom or the the, the touch that separates him in terms of uh, connecting with people. For sure, he's been uh, he's been a lot of a lot of fun to watch. Raph, I appreciate you uh, taking out the time. I know you're busy and prepping for games, and I'm excited to see you this week in New York. I look forward to that. Bring some money this trip, though. You know, <laughs> step up to the plate. <laughs> have, a, I, have a good day. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> see you, Raph. All right. Take care, pal. Bye bye now. I'd like to once again thank Bill Raftery for taking the time out and jumping on the sidelines podcast, especially as we move towards tournament season. He's uh, he's pretty busy, so enjoyed that conversation with Raft. Before I let you guys go, I want to make sure that you are supporting the sidelines podcast. And as I've said before, the best way to do that is to shoot over to Apple Podcasts and or your favorite podcast app. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for me. But I'd also ask that you leave a rating and or a review. Would love to know your feedback on the podcast. As always. Thanks for listening and have a great week.